Dunningham, California at uh, the uh, Love's truck stop over here. Uh, we brought in this 48-foot uh, flatbed steel plate. Um, this is going to Portland, Oregon. It's an empty flatbed. We brought it from Ryder, believe it or not, and it's going for uh, or going to T, uh, TNT Trailers up in uh, Troutdale, Oregon. Believe it or not, it's a pretty nice looking trailer. Again, it's 48 foot steel plated, two axle trailer. I think it slides, the axle slide, yeah, I believe so. Uh, it, uh, it did pretty well here. Uh, it has electrical uh, issues, but uh, not terribly bad. We managed to figure, figure it out. The, uh, the plugs are uh, needing to be serviced, but uh, if uh, you, uh, uh, mess macgyver anyway i call it macgyver the uh wires it, it works uh it will need to be get uh, you know service when uh, when it does get arrive uh, in troutdale at tnt trailers but uh, for the road at this time uh it uh, ran very well again this is a 48 footer alum of uh, steel plated uh flatbed with ratchet straps and uh tie down straps and the uh, sliding tandem axle in the back boxes and of course a license plate registration and all that stuff we have that uh, in our truck and one uh, of the habits at uh, truck stops especially if you're stopping in a place that you don't know you don't recognize that you've never been there uh, you know out of the states out of the far corners of the country or whichever um, just like with anything else, pay attention to your surroundings. Uh, recognize who you're parked next to. Uh, pet, you know, take a little bit of time and actually look around and see and observe who's watching you. Um, because all truck stops are just like any community in, in, uh, in, in America. Uh, people are the same. And uh, you're leaving your truck behind to go get some food or grub or coffee or whatever just before you re you rest and uh, you don't know who's messing with your stuff who could come in and take your uh, property your your trailer your uh, belongings you know breaking into the truck is really not that hard to do these days and specifically if you're a tow operator you have slim gyms you have tools but uh, some of these truckers also have the same and uh not uh, being equipped to uh, to uh, break into anything doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to do it because these doors are fiberglass and you know with the right tool you can easily break in uh, but uh, one of the things I take into account is the stuff that I've got inside of course are valuable to me but uh, is the environment that I'm at and I always present myself as, as like someone is also staying with the truck. You know, I'm not ever going to uh, present like, oh, the truck is unoccupied. Here, come in and break in or whatever, or mess with the cargo or whichever. I always present when I leave a closed curtain, as you see up there. Can't really see what's inside. Can't see if anybody's sleeping, paying attention. Uh, I also have my dash cameras always running and then of course I've got my blink cameras in the windows as well. I've got a little notice in the window here. I don't know if you can see it says blink. So hopefully thieves are going to see the notice. But generally the dash cameras and the blink cameras give away uh, and deter people, give away that someone is either paying attention or watching. And then the lights, when I leave the lights on, uh, at least the marker lights suggest that somebody's occupying that vehicle at the time. Even though I'm not in the vehicle, uh, whoever's watching might be thinking somebody is in there, so I'm not going to try to mess with it. So I recommend taking precautions to protect your property, your trucks, your valuables, uh, but most of it comes down to observation. Look around who's watching you as you're leaving, who's, who are you parked next to. Are they paying attention to? Are there uh, uh, homeless transients, people walking about? Those are the things that you want to address with the 
uh, truck stop management. And then, of course, if you don't feel safe, don't park. You know, don't park in the area. Park close to the door, the fuel station. Park somewhere you can pay attention and watch your truck. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, a truck stop that uh, I've used before. It used to be, or it's recognized with Pilot. It's called Easy Trip. Um, and so they got good fuel, $5.13 per gallon for diesel. So this is why I stopped here. But I already got enough fuel, so all I stopped is for a little break and some corn dogs and some food. But uh, one of the good, uh, I guess, uh, tools is to remember to always present your truck occupied uh, so that way people don't mess with your stuff or with your cargo. All right, guys, so we brought the TNT trailer over here back to TNT, which is right across the fence on this side here. However, because it's Sunday, they're closed. So we had to park it in our storage yard here in uh, Troutdale. Uh, we left it here until tomorrow morning at uh, you know opening day, which is Monday. It's parked in our storage yard, secure storage overnight. Uh, it made the travel to uh, Toronto, California just fine. It's a nice looking trailer. Again, this is the 48 foot uh, steel, steel bed. Uh, for, uh, <laughs> a trailer that we brought from California to Troutdale for TNT trailers. So we're in Troutdale now, just across the fence is uh, TNT trailers over there. Uh, this is our des designated storage area for over um, night parking, secured parking. And uh, that's all we can do for now because it's Sunday, their their lot is closed, so we had to park this trailer somewhere for tonight. Um, so we're going to be leaving it here until the morning, and then uh, either they'll pick it up from across the fence, or we'll deliver it back to them across the way you guys uh it's chris again uh, as you've seen the previous videos this is the tnt trailer we brought in from pendleton no i'm sorry this is the, this is the tnt trailer we brought in from california we partially parked it here at the storage yard that we have which is across the street from uh tnt and uh store it temporarily because tnt was closed and uh, now we're going to be delivering it. And so uh, our uh, delivery uh, for this morning is going to be documented just for this exact purpose. So here we are. Um, going to connect to the trailer. I like to do is uh, simply uh, ad address the issue with my truck trailer combination frame and I, I always lower my airbags before I back in underneath the trailer as you can see here uh, the airbags are completely almost completely uh, aired out it allows for more clearance and then I come out uh, underneath the trailer just enough that my fifth wheel is going to connect to the front of the fifth wheel and that way my rear brackets are not going to catch onto the pin which sometimes it could happen so at this point i'm going to inflate the airbags and that will lift the trailer with my fifth wheel up and then i can continue backing in You see my uh, airbags are inflating now, and uh, it's going to bring that fifth wheel up, because you have to put pressure to the trailer and leveling it. In some cases, Well, it's flat. 
I'm gonna continue back in. carry a trusted flashlight you know for the purpose of climbing underneath there to look at the jaws the jaws of the fifth wheel are coupled together locked in place around the fifth wheel you can see that my handles pushed in my jaws are pushed are locked in place now I just gotta connect the other one We got the glad hands here. Of course, just like in the other videos, you've seen the emergency and the service line. The service line usually is on the outside. The emergency is usually in the inside, including the driver's side. So this trailer has been out around town. By the way, the airline putting that cell plate electrical also needs to be connected. You know, even though we're only traveling about a block away, we still need to have lights. And uh, everything's connected. Now I'm going to, of course, like everything else, raise that landing gear. So once, uh, let's see if we can put a different angle on display. Not really. Well, actually, we can put it on the, my other trailer long as it sits here. Sometimes these landing gears malfunction, but uh, in most cases there's two speeds, a slow speed and a fast speed, a high speed or a low speed, whichever you want to call it, an easy and a, and a hard. Uh, in the case where there is a handle that's uh, allowing for uh, uh, this kind of turn, you can use that as well, or you can just simply do the normal thing. Sometimes the frame of the trailer catches it. So uh, most of, just to make it simple, right now I'm gonna be using the high speed and then I'm gonna actually use the mechanical rowing or boat, whatever. I don't know what this is really called. This is just gives it a little faster motion to raising the landing gear. However, some of these gears could use a lubrication or two, a little bit of lubrication to, uh, to speed up the process and to make it easier on the drivers. Now that we've got it connected, airlines are connected, light is connected. We're gonna, as always, test the lights. We got marker lights operational. We're gonna also check the rear and uh, as we have done all the time, dump the tires. We do have a thumper that I use, but generally I just finished dumping these. So, marker lights are operational. This is a 48 foot. We're gonna dump these tires. We're only going a block away, you guys. So in this case, we're just totally set. So now we're gonna pull it out and go and deliver it to TNT trailers.
As you remember, this trailer came from California. It's now in Troutdale, Oregon. Everything is disconnected, landing gear is down. I'm gonna detach, but first I'm gonna lower the airbag. And that is the journey that this trailer has made from California uh, over to Now that we made the delivery at, at TNT Trailers, or TNT Trailers, TNT Trailers, uh, Mr. Brad, uh, one of the managers, uh, signed off the document, and we're going to be invoicing him for the delivery or the transfer or the, tra uh, the transport. Uh, now we're going to go return back to the yard, but we want to make sure that I... We always make sure, and sometimes we forget, that means me or anybody else, we forget that uh, things need to be signed. And uh, when uh, we forget to sign things, we, 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 we got to make sure we go back to get the document signed. Because later it's going to be too late sometimes, and we must ensure that uh, all documents get signed uh, before we leave. And uh, in this case, we did. So everybody's happy, the customer's happy, the shipper, uh, and of course we as a carrier are happy with that transport. Thank you.